Hello, today we're going to be taking a look at Debian GNU Linux version 6. Debian GNU Linux is one of the oldest surviving Linux distros. It was one of the earliest ones ever created, and it is still alive and kicking today. They just had a release, version 6, also known as Squeeze, a couple of days ago over the weekend. Let's go ahead and take a look at the history, let's take a look at the release notes, all of that stuff while we take a look at the distro itself. If we come into this website, this is their brand new website, they just updated a couple of days ago, debian.org. If we go to about and go to how did it all get started, you see here it started in August 1993 by Ian Murdoch. The name itself comes from the creator Ian and his wife Deborah. They mashed it together to make Debian. And basically when it was created, the word distribution was not a commonly used one because Linux was not commonly distributed. Now there's one key thing to keep in mind when it comes to Debian, it keeps coming up over and over again, and that's the social contract. And I never heard it called this before really looking at their website. And basically, the points of this are that Debian is going to remain 100% free, and that means that it's following the free software guidelines that they've set in place. Not necessarily the free software foundation guidelines, but you see we've got these down here. Free distribution, source code will be provided, derived works are allowed, there's a whole list of them there. You can definitely go check out Debian.org if you'd like to read them. But the rest of their contract, we're giving back to the free software community, we're not going to hide problems, the priorities are the users and free software, and because of that user part of the priorities, the works that do not meet those free standards are still going to be provided, they're just going to be in a separate area of their repositories that you can go pull it from. All right, now that we've established that Debian is really, really big on the idea of everything being free, let's take a look at the release notes for this latest version. If we go in here, release notes, we click on English. All right, and what's new in Debian GNU Linux version 6? You'll see here we have all of these different versions of it available, different platforms that are supported. That is one of the key features of Debian that is really, really nice, is that you can put it on just about whatever you want and it will run. So what's new in this version? It says here they've got over 29,000 packages in their default repositories now. The version of Xorg has been updated. The versions of GNOME, KDE, XFCE, and LXDE have all been updated. Productivity ap applications have been updated. And basically that's the biggest difference here. There are no huge new features or new overwhelming features or anything. It's just from version 5 to version 6, there are a bunch of new pieces of software, updated pieces of software. One other change that I found kind of interesting, but it doesn't really make or break anything. Some of the non-free firmware has been moved from the traditional kernel to the non-free repository. So you have to go and install something such as firmware-linux to get that non-free blob. But other than that, Debian is still Debian, so let's take a look at what we get when you install it from the CD. Now as you see here, we are looking at the GNOME version. I am more familiar with GNOME, so I thought that would be the appropriate one to select. You do, of course, like I mentioned before, have KDE, XFCE, and LXDE versions available. But when we go ahead and look through the default installed applications list, you'll see a lot of similarities and just a couple of minor differences from what you might get from a derived distro like Ubuntu. By the way, I hadn't mentioned it yet, Ubuntu is based upon Debian, so you should see a lot of similarities here. But basically, looking at accessories, you'll see here a lot of the same stuff. I don't think Ubuntu has the root terminal enabled by default. You just have to go check it in the menu list. Anyway, the games list should be pretty much the same. It's GNOME Games. Under graphics, you get a couple more applications than you get by default with Ubuntu, which is kind of nice. But again, you can install whatever you want on whatever distro, so it really doesn't make much of a difference. Under Internet, you will see one of the key differences here. You do get the Epiphany web browser, which is the GNOME default but you also get Iceweasel as a web browser. If I go ahead and open that up, you might notice it. You might see that it's kind of familiar. Version 3.5.16 made by the Mozilla Project. Oh wait, that's Firefox. It's a little bit outdated, a little bit older. As we have mentioned, some of the software is just a little bit dated, but not too far. But basically, this is Firefox with the Firefox Mozilla branding removed and replaced with Iceweasel. Funny little play on words there. So yes, you do have a familiar browser in there, and it's very easy to install other ones. Chromium has just been added to their repository, if I remember reading that correctly. But other than that, other stuff under Internet's about the same. Office has the OpenOffice suite, just like you'd expect by default. You have the sound and video menu with a lot of the standard applications. Rhythmbox for the music player. 
system tools again a lot of standard things the Debian installer uh, it's a little bit odd to still have that there after the installation is complete but sure not gonna complain about it one other thing that's really nice to see here is report bug so if you find something wrong you can just go through a couple of step process tell them about the bug and file it with their system so you can help to keep the distro growing and changing see here you've got different difficulty levels for the amount of knowledge that you have to give to them but other than that the applications menu is about the same as what you'd expect out of Ubuntu or any other Debian based distro except of course you don't see the software center there but if you look over in the system menu, preferences, about the same as what you'd expect, but under administration, and this is a new change in Debian 6, you've got the software center. Now if we open that up, you see here we have the full, what would be classified as the Ubuntu software center, but it's running in Debian. You see here we've got provided by Debian software. We also don't have that software for purchase section you see in Ubuntu, which is interesting, but it does sort of go along with the idea of only providing free software and making it easy to get free and not really much else. Let's go ahead and look at the featured applications just to see what they mention here. We've got Audacity, we've got Blender, Frets on Fire. Yeah, so there's there's a lot of the similar applications you'd expect to see coming from Ubuntu. You see them in Debian because Ubuntu is based on Debian. But basically if you click on one of them, you select more info, you see here it says install it, it gives you the website, an image, a version, the license, and basically that's about all you're going to need. Uh, the newer version of the software center that's coming in 11.04 does provide reviews and ratings and that might get pushed up to Debian eventually but uh, who knows we'll see what happens. I did test this out earlier just to make sure the software center is working appropriately. I installed Abbey Word using it and if you come into office you see Abbey Word is installed that was not there by default. So the software center does definitely work, but if you don't want to use that, you can still come under administration and use the Synaptic Package Manager, or go through the terminal and use apt-get or aptitude, because aptitude is still installed. And I guess the two last things I'd like to look at, and I'm not sure if I mentioned them earlier or not, are the version of GNOME, which in this case is 2.30.2, .2, made back in November of last year. Again, a little bit outdated, not terribly far out of date. From their website, they claim to be, quote, a few months behind which a few months behind gives things time to mature and become more stable. That's sort of the whole point. To be a rock solid, stable base you could use for a desktop, a server, laptop, netbook, phone if you really wanted to. I've heard of people putting Debian on the Nokia 810 and the 900 and all of that fun stuff. But anyway, let's look at the kernel version as well while we're here. If I go ahead and pull this up and type a new name, dash A. The kernel version we've got is version 2.6.32-5, AMD 64, because I'm on a 64-bit system. This is, again, a slightly outdated version. A lot of the newer distros have version 35, 36, or even 37, depending on which one you're using. But, again, not too far out of date for it to really be a problem. And depending on what you're doing, it should be possible to enable additional repositories and get more up-to-date software. But again, that sort of goes back to the whole idea of stability versus bleeding edge. You can get newer software, but you do sacrifice some of that stability you've gained by using that tried and true older software. But basically, that's about all I've got to say about Debian 6. If you have not tried it yet, it's definitely worth the download and taking a look at it. I've heard nothing but great things about it, except for the fact that the software is a little bit older than you might like. So let me know what you think about Debian in the comments section below. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time.